Are you thinking of moving to Denmark? Well, then I have to tell you that it's not all who can happiness. Let's dive into the top 10 reasons why Denmark might not be your dream destination after all. Stay tuned to find out what life in this Nordic country really is like. Hey there, my name is Steven Højlund. I am not only a Danish national born and raised, I also travel, lived and studied abroad. So I know how life is both inside and outside of Denmark. Moreover, I have worked with foreign nationals and expats in my entire career. Many good expat colleagues have become my friends as well. So I know the hardships and pains many expats have living in Denmark. In this video, I will focus on the 10 reasons why many foreigners leave Denmark again. And some of these reasons are also some of the downsides that I personally see with living here in Denmark. Stick around to uncover some aspects of Danish life that might have you thinking twice about moving here after all. The Danish weather is cold and wet. Denmark is known for its oceanic climate, so get ready for windy and rainy experience, which is not for everyone. Oceanic climate, as opposed to continental climate, is characterized by the stable temperatures with low variance. Water is all around Denmark, and water tends to cool and heat much lower than dirt. So the Atlantic Ocean essentially keeps Denmark warm in the winter with temperatures around 0 degrees Celsius and cool in the summer with temperatures around 20 degrees, maybe a little less. In general, the weather here is changeable, which is also due to the water surrounding Denmark. That means more rain and windy conditions, much like Ireland, England, Belgium, Norway, Iceland and Holland, which also would have similar weather conditions, especially in the microclimates close to the Atlantic Ocean. The weather is the main reason why many people should think twice about moving to Denmark. Personally, I like the changes of the seasons. I just wish that the summer would be warmer and the winter would be shorter and not so damn dark. It's actually not so cold in the winter. If you live in cities, you'll probably only see snow a week or two during the year, but the wind can be really, really chilling. Now, let's talk about the close Danish culture. The Danish and Scandinavian cultures are introverted, so people tend to cultivate long-lasting friendships in the formative years and then stick with these friends and family throughout life. Danes value their privacy and there is often a very rigid destination between work-life balance on, or work life on the one hand and private life on the other hand. That means after four or five o'clock, you don't see your colleagues anymore in the office. They are off to picking up kids or do sports. They don't hang around the office or go to the pub uh, on a Thursday afternoon. To my knowledge, Danes are considered polite people in general. They will answer your questions and try to help you if you need it and if you ask for it. But to get into the friend zone, it's quite a different story. It's quite hard. Apart from the private and somewhat close culture, the language might also play a role here. While Danes in general speak really good English, it's not so easy for many to have a relaxing and fun time when English is spoken compared to speaking in their mother tongue. That goes for most nations, I guess. Personally, I can see it from both sides. So despite the fact that other cultures can seem more open initially, I've also experienced difficulty making deep connections with peers in the US and France, where I lived a few years back. But at the same time, many Danes, especially the ones that lived abroad once, often wish to be more outgoing and spontaneous. So those are maybe the ones that you should try to befriend uh, in case you're already living in Denmark. In any case, the close Scandinavian culture means you'll need uh, patience and perseverance in terms of making deep connections here. So if you are very outgoing, you should probably count on making a lot more expat friends and not so many Danish friends if you move to Denmark. Denmark is not for you if you like long hikes in wild nature. Denmark is a small agrarian country with an agricultural production that can feed around three times the Danish population. 
since the Middle Ages, deforestation has made room for fields to the point where there is no wild forests left in Denmark. There are forests, but if you hike into them, you'll basically hit a road within a matter of hours. Also, Denmark is completely flat. Its highest point is 170 meters above sea level. So there are no mountains in Denmark. They are in Norway and in Sweden. On the contrary, Denmark has 7,300 kilometers of coastline and boasts 407 islands. It's quite often windy in Denmark, so it's ideal for water sports like sailing, kayaking, windsurfing and, and kiting. So if that's something for you, uh, consider moving to Denmark. So while the coastline is beautiful, if you seek wildlife, nature, Denmark, though, might not be for you and it might be slightly boring, actually. If you're looking to get the maximum value for your buck, Denmark is not for you. Denmark ranks as one of the most expensive countries globally. Sure, the salaries are good if you are in high skill labor, but for those in lower skill jobs, Copenhagen can be quite draining on your wallet. So if you have seen the photos of Mühaun and you want to settle right there in the city center of Copenhagen, you will have to earn probably top 10% to buy an apartment there. Or you can choose to settle into a room there in a shared apartment. So that's the alternative. You can find accommodation, but many expats moving here will have to settle with less expensive options in the suburbs of, of Copenhagen, if Copenhagen is your destination. In other parts of Denmark, the living expenses are much lower, but the salaries tend to be lower too. If you don't like paying tax, then don't come to Denmark. Denmark is famous for being one of the countries in the world with the highest taxes. If you move to Denmark, you should count on paying around 40 to 50% tax depending on a lot of factors. It's complicated to calculate the exact number as it depends on your salary, your pension con contribution, other income streams, the municipality you live in, if you decide to pay to the Danish state church, and many other variables. The tax on cars in Denmark is also hefty and therefore cars are very expensive. Heavy cars tend to relatively be more expensive than smaller and more nimble cars. Moreover, there is no such thing as the Spanish Beckham law in Denmark. That means that in Denmark, you can be taxed from income originating from elsewhere like investment returns. As I'm not a financial advisor, I strongly recommend you to seek financial advice to avoid being taxed disproportionately in Denmark after settling in. While tax might seem like a major turndown for many, it's hard to avoid complex and burdensome taxes if you move to Europe altogether. The Danish tax system and Danish taxes are high, but it's not much different from France, Germany, Belgium or Sweden. It's just different asset classes and income streams that are taxed differently. Unless you are very wealthy, tax will probably not in reality be so important after all. And if you are very rich, then why not just buy a house in the Mediterranean and live happily after? If you are a foreign national paying taxes in Denmark, you, you might not be eligible to all the perks of the Danish welfare state. How is that fair? The answer is that it is probably not so fair. The Danish welfare state supports you in many ways. For example, if you are without a job, getting sick, need housing, education, and so forth. But it very quickly becomes a lot more complicated than that actually, especially if you're an expat without a permanent residency. A permanent residency will give you much the same rights as staying, but you have to wait seven years of living in Denmark and supporting yourself to get the permanent residency. The problem is not healthcare, which you will get through the CPR number quite quickly. The problem is Dowping, which is a cheap deductible and state-funded unemployment support scheme, which is quite lucrative. If you lose your job, you will get up to approximately 3,000 USD per month until you find a job or for a period of two years without a job. The problem for many foreigners, however, is that they are or were not eligible to the scheme before they had obtained permanent residency after seven years of self-sufficiency, which again meant to work and earn a certain amount of money without losing the job for seven years. 
if you are an EU citizen or a citizen from Norway, Switzerland or Liechtenstein, then this gets a lot easier. The EU legislation ensures you somewhat comparable rights and benefits compared to the Danish nationals. But if you are a non-EU citizen, it very much depends on your visa, what you are entitled to. And you should be mindful of that, for example, if you come to Denmark on a student visa. Also, foreign nationals also have harder times obtaining real credit loans, which essentially are special cheap Danish bond-funded loans for buying property. Like taxes, these things are heavily regulated and they do require you to seek special advice on some of these matters. I've added a few uh, links down below that you can that could be useful for you uh, to consult for more information. Danish food is not great. While Denmark actually has some of the best restaurants in the world, a Danish cookbook, on the other hand, does not really offer much food that is originally Danish. The most original Danish uh, dish is probably smørbrød or open-faced sandwiches. I simply love smørbrød to the point where I wrote a small booklet about how you can make your own smørbrød. I included a link down below as well for that book. So, you might eat well if you travel in Denmark, but it's not like traveling around Italy or Greece, enjoying local produce uh, and, you know, local recipes and discover new uh, special dishes. The Danish kitchen has a quite narrow range of local dishes, and the reason is simply that Denmark is a small country. So compared, uh, you can compare Denmark to a Bundesland or region in Germany or a region like Brittany in France, and you will find the comparable amount of local dishes. So for example, in Brittany, they have the crepes. In Denmark, we have smørbrød and rye bread. So more or less comparable to how many different dishes you have. So beyond smørbrød, don't expect the culinary revolution when you get here. The food is not bad, but you will have to look quite far to get like unique, properly Danish food and eatery experiences. Danish is one of the most difficult languages to master in the world. This is not because the grammar is very complex, actually on the contrary, it's more the irregularities of the language and the particular, and in particular, the pronunciation. Danish has 52 vowel sounds, some have counted. That's the most vowel sounds in a language in the world. Therefore, it's pr practically impossible for anyone to speak proper Danish without an accent if you are a foreigner. Spanish only requires nine vowels, uh, vowel sounds by comparison. Add to this that one, Danes speak really good English so that you will have to have a really hard time finding someone to actually practice your Danish with. Two, Danish is a very small language and therefore it's not very useful if you should want to move out of Denmark at some point. And then finally, three, Danish is also not a very beautiful language, so why bother learning it after all? All in all, this makes Danish very hard to learn and master, even for foreigners who have lived here for many, many years. The good news is that you also don't really need it to function in the Danish society, because Danish people in general speak pretty good English. But you will still miss a lot of context, and that is sad when you have moved your whole life to a new country, I think. Denmark is not for you if you are ambitious. Denmark is a small uh, country and the labor market is not as competitive as in many larger countries and mega cities around the world. That means that if you want to make it very big with your startup, your salary or your CEO aspirations in a large corporation, you will probably find that difficult here. The culture is also not very ambitious. Danes in general don't strive for prestige, wealth and power in general. They are more inclined to seek a balanced life with time for reflection, hobbies, leisure, uh, travel, friends and family. It's completely normal for many Danes not to strive for leadership positions and actually shunning responsibility at work as that would just require more hours even if the salary is also higher. The progressive taxes obviously play a role here as you pay a higher percentage on the last crown earned. 
So Denmark is not for you if you want to make it really big, earn those trillions, or shoot spaceships to Mars. If you want to move to Denmark, it's a long-term decision, not something you do for just a few years. Basically, the time and effort you will put into learning the language and struggle with integrating and finding friends will take you a long time. Hence, you might want to consider if the investment is worth it and given that you would move to another country and learn a language much more widely used like Spanish or French if you move there. The work-life balance and the relaxed working culture might be really nice, I personally think so, but if you are later to move on after having adopted this culture, then it might be a harsh reality check to move to the US, Germany or India, where the cultures are much more traditional. Hence, I don't think Denmark is a good stepping stone before moving to another country. I think Denmark should be almost a life or ideological choice for you to make. You have to go all in, essentially. Okay, I don't hope I scared you off completely making this video. That was definitely not my intention. I just wanted to help you make the right decision for you, your future, and maybe the family you intend to bring along. I hope you liked this video on the 10 reasons for not moving to Denmark. If you want to hear more about how and why to settle in Denmark, please leave a question in the comments below or consider subscribing altogether to the channel. That would also really help me with the algorithm. You can also check out my other videos here and here. Until next time, take care.